<clears throat> Hello everybody and welcome to this Roblox live events tutorial. Five, I'm going to be showing you four, how to make three, something happen at a two, specific time. One, and when it does, lift you'll off. be able to see it across every single server. So keep watching to learn how it So a lot of people want to know how to add live events into their games and the way they work is by using something called os.time. So if you were to go into a Roblox script and print out os.time like this, it prints out a number and this number is called the Unix time. So we can see over here on the right that Unix time is a system for describing a point in time. So it could be in the future, uh, which is what we want for our live event, because we want to pick a time in the future for the event to begin. It is the number of seconds that have elapsed, so the number of seconds that have gone by since the Unix epoch. Oh, what's that? Well, the Unix epoch was on at midnight UTC, so that's just the standard time zone, um, universal time zone, uh, but anyway, it happened at midnight UTC time on the 1st of January 1970, so what they did, on the 1st of January 1970, at midnight, they started a stopwatch, pretty much, and every second ever since the 1st of January 1970 at midnight, that stopwatch has increased by a second, every, every second it's gone up by one. So, obviously, since then, a lot of seconds have gone by. So, the time is going to be a big number. And you can easily work out what this time is. You can, um, you know, use os.time to find the current time, uh, the number of seconds that have passed since January the 1st, 1970. And you can see if I keep on calling it os.time here, um, you'll see that it gets bigger as we, as we go, go along. Every second... If I keep doing it, it's increasing. So, os.time is just a way in Lua of getting the Unix time since the epoch. The epoch was the time when they began the time. When was the, the epoch is the 1st of January 1970, okay? And the Unix time is tracking how long it has been since the epoch. But it doesn't tell us how long in years or months or days or minutes or hours. It tells us how long it's been in seconds. So obviously, this is a big number, as I've told you. If you were to put it into Google and divide it by 60 to get the number of minutes, then divide it by we divide it by 60 again because you need to get the hour, then divide it by 24, then divide it by 365, you'll get 50 years. And guess what? 1970 was 50 years ago because you do 2020. Minus 50, 1970. So it was 50 point something years. That's because it's taking the months into account as well. But what you need to know is that the Unix time is the number of seconds that have elapsed since the 1st of January, 1970. And how does this help us with our live event? Well, because it updates every second, as we've noticed, it gets bigger every second. And we, we're able to know what this number will be at a certain point in the future, right? Because if we wanted to get the Unix time, what it will be in 10 minutes, we just need to add on um, 600 because 600 seconds is 10 minutes. So if I show you this website here, it's called Epoch Converter. You can, I'm sure there's loads of other websites that do this because this is standard across you know, computing and all that. We need to pick a time for our uh, live event to begin. So I've gone to this website, very useful and um, I'm going to set the year to be 2020, the month to be 6th for June, the day to be the 1st, because it's the 1st of June today. Um, the hour is currently 31 minutes past 6, so I'm going to make this be 6, um, 33, and we'll have 0 seconds, so it's right on the dot. And really important that you, are, you set AM or PM, if it's in the morning or the evening, and then you set G GMT, um, you set it to your local time, okay? So it's going to go by the current time in your time zone. So because I'm in the UK and it's 6.31, this will go off at 6.33 UK time, so in two minutes. So I then click on human date to timestamp. That will give me the what the Unix time will be 
when it gets to that time. So when it gets to 6.33, zero seconds, the epoch timestamp, or the Unix time, which is currently here, so the, the time, don't forget, is the amount of seconds that have passed since January the 1st, 1970, and that is going up every single second. So this number is the current epoch time, and this number here, which is the, going to be the epoch time at 6.33, is larger than this number because it's in the future. So what we're going to do is we're just going to go into our script. I'm going to copy this epoch timestamp. I'm going to go into my script here. So I'm going to put this as the time to start, okay? And I'm also going to set the time to stop. So when do I want my live event to stop? Well, I want it to stop at 6.35. So I'm going to get a new timestamp. So this time to stop is going to be the time after which, say if you joined a new server, it would play the live event, but when it got to 6.35, it would no longer play it. So now if we join the game, it's saying that I've got 12 seconds to go. And if we look at our timer, well, that's true. There's only 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1 seconds until it is um, 6.33. And it's saying start the live event. So what we've done is we've picked a time in the future, and we've got its Unix time by converting the time, the human date, to a timestamp. And that's going to be the number of seconds since that 1st of January. So we can make this our time to start. And so we've got os.time, we've got a while loop, and every second we're getting the current time. So the os.time, which is going to be this value here. Then we're checking, um, we'll just deal with this if statement first. We're checking to see if that os.time, the time right now, that number of seconds, is greater than our time to start. If it is greater than the time to start, then we've obviously exceeded the time uh, which when we want it to start. So because the time to start will be in the future, eventually the time now will catch up with it and it will become equal to or greater than that time, won't it? Because, you know, we set our live event to begin at 15.910.327.80. And if you look here, it's 15910328. So it was, if you look at the last five digits, it was 32780. It's now 32854, and it increases every second. It's just that sometimes when I go out of um, view and I don't keep the window in focus, it stops, but it will come back. Don't worry if you're wondering. So every second, I'm checking to see if the current number of seconds is greater than the time to start. And if it is, then we can begin the live event. But if it isn't, and the time to start is still bigger than the current time, we'll just print out how long it is until it is the next live event. And a really quick way to find the amount of time until your live again event begins is by saying time to start minus time now. Because if time to start is bigger than the current time, and we've not exceeded it yet, then if you take away the time now from it, you'll have a number of seconds. So, um... Yeah, I'll give you an example. So it's it's 6.35. Let's create a timestamp for 6.37. So if I take the timestamp, and I just get up my calculator. So if I take in this timestamp here, and we take away the current time, which will be smaller right now, you can see it's 96 seconds to go. And if we were to keep doing this calculation, it would eventually come down to zero. That is what is going on in the script. I forgot to um, update my time to stop, didn't I? Let's just make that even further in the future, and I'll explain that very soon. So here we go, so yeah, 62 seconds now. So that's going to count down, right, because it's just subtracting the current time from that time to start. So when the time now, which is current, always going up every second, eventually it will be greater than our time to start, so that will begin the live event. So I trigger a function and I break the loop, because once the live event has happened, we no longer need to be checking for it. Okay, but if you think about it, if you open up a new server, which is is past the time to start, say the time to start was 7.33 and you've opened a new server at 7.35, then it's going to um, launch the live event straight away. And what if you want a cutoff time? You, you don't want to show the live event in new servers after a certain time. So say the live event happened at 7.35 and maybe you want it to occur in new servers for five minutes afterwards then you would just set this time to stop to be 7.40 because it's five minutes in the future. That's when, after that time, 
live events will no longer play in new servers because we've gone past the live event and it, it's over now. So the time to start is going to be in the future. It will be greater than the OS.time, which is the current number of seconds, this epoch time. So whenever OS.time becomes equal to or greater than the time to start, we know it's time to begin the event. However, time to stop will also be in the future, but it will be greater than the time to start value. So this is the time at which the live event will no longer be played anymore. So if a new server is started up in the future after the live event has played, it will no longer play the live event if the time to stop hasn't been exceeded. So once it has been exceeded, it will no longer play the live event in new servers after that time. So how do you trigger things to happen when you when your live event happens? So I've created a function called live events and I'm calling it when the time now gets greater than the time to start. And I can, you can do any code in here. So if you wanted to launch a rocket, for example, um, I could insert a body force into this rocket here. So what I've just done, I've made some code in this live event function, which is going to insert a body force into the rocket and unanchor it and turn on some particle emitters so it looks like it's blasting off into space. We now just need to create our new time to start and time to stop. So in the UK, it is 6.41.16. That's the current time. So I'm going to make this event happen at 6.42. We're going to go on human dates to timestamp and I'm going to copy that and put it as our time to start. I want the event to no longer uh, be played after 6.43. So I'm going to create another timestamp and I'm going to copy that. So you can see it's 60 seconds ahead of the time to start. So let's head in. I'm going to just spawn by my little rocket and um, Let's just clear the output to go to that error from a different script. And it is um, off the ground a little bit. That's my um, fault. Sorry about that. But if we watch now, three, two, one, and we should have liftoff. And there we go. It fires itself into the air and off goes the rocket. Now, I said about that time to stop window, right? So because you will still be able to see it in new servers, even though the time the timer has gone past um, 6.42, it's still launching itself, right? Every time we open a new server. That's because the time to stop will stop us from, from launching it in new servers after 6.43. So you, we can do it, you know, as many times as we like, as long as the time is is, is lower than 6.43. So as soon as it hits 6.43 on the clock, we'll no longer be able to launch the rocket in a new server. The live event won't play because we're breaking the while loop um, if the time to stop has been exceeded. So let's just go back here and it's about to be 6.43. So we'll wait for 6.43 and then we'll open up a new server. So here we go. You can see 3.80, 3.80. So now the Unix time is greater than this timestamp which ends in 3.80, which means that if the time now is greater than the time to stop, which it is, it's just gonna break out of the while loop. It won't even get to this if statement and it won't be able to run the live event. So if I go into the game, you'd expect it to launch the rocket, but it actually doesn't because the time to stop has been exceeded. So the live event will no longer work in new servers. So that is all you need to know about live events on Roblox. We're using math, uh, sorry, os.time to get the current Unix epoch time, which is a universal uh, time used in computing. So I'm also using the epoch converter website to change a human date into an epoch timestamp. And I'm then using these variables, time to start and time to stop, to tell the script when I want my live event to begin. And I'm having a while loop, which will check every second to see if it's time yet by comparing that os.time to the time to start and time to stop values. And when the current time is greater than that time to start, we know it is time to start the live event. So. Hope that was useful. If it was, please leave a like and don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more scripting videos. Why not check out some others? I've got loads of interesting videos and an advanced series as well if you're trying to push your knowledge on Roblox scripting. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.